Welcome again. My name is Ganesh. I'm the marketing manager at Inspire Tech. Um, I'll be your moderator today. And again, thank you for joining us. Today's topic is fall security beyond corporate walls. And we have Satish Murthy from Cohesity, Mark Chen from Votiro, and Max Chen from Inspire Tech with us. Cohesity paves the way in a new era in data management that solves a critical challenge that businesses are facing today, which is mass data fragmentation. And Votiro provides secure gateways to help customers, networks, and endpoints uh, safekeeping, and they keep it uh, free from any threats with its positive selection technology. Um, InspireTech provides easy to use and secure software products to boost workforce efficiency and productivity in both public and private sectors. And today is the fourth of the Future of Work webinar series. If you were with us in any of the last uh, three webinars, thanks for joining us again. And if it's your first time in our webinar series, welcome and thank you again for being with us. And let me just move on to the agenda. Yeah. So similar to last week's, we will start off with why we decided to uh, organize future work webinar series and then following by a short discussion on the challenges that enterprises face and what some trends that are happening. Then we'll have a short presentation from each company and a short summary on how these three companies uh, solutions get together and how they help to overcome the file security issues in remote or hybrid work environment beyond the corporate walls. And then we'll close off with another short discussion on the future tips and tricks from our speakers and then a Q&A session. So just a little housekeeping before we get started. Uh, first of all, we will be giving out some small gifts and we'll announce them at the end after the Q&A session. And as for the Q&A session, uh, if you have any questions during the presentations, uh, please use the Q&A button instead of the chat button uh, on your Zoom control panel. And uh, we'll be collecting them during the presentation and we'll try to ask as many of them as possible. Then, shall I start then? So why did we decide to create the, this webinar series called Future of Work? because uh, we wanted to highlight the importance of innovating and adapting to the latest trends. Um, a lot of organizations have started their digital transformation journeys already, but it was at much uh, low, uh, slower rate and that we had to face this past year. So the pandemic has accelerated the transformation and changed some workforce trends already, such as the adoption of automation, digitalization, remote work and more. Uh, so we decided to have these webinars to get together with our partner companies uh, to discuss how we help organizations to address these challenges, ease the transition to this new normal and prepare for the future of work. And so for this series, we have planned five webinars in five weeks and we are almost at the end of our webinar series. So we only have one more left after today. Uh, it will be on the same time next Thursday so we hope that you can, uh, if you can find time, you join us again. And let me change the slide. Yeah. So today we'll be looking at the um, three products as a whole. So Kohi City, Votiro, and EasyShare from Inspire Tech. And our speakers will go through how these solutions help to solve the uh, file security challenges in remote work with their own expertise and how they can help you to ensure all files entering your organization are risk-free and what are the most productive ways to receive files and secure your uh, storage infrastructure. So with that, I'd like to welcome our speakers, Satish, Mark, and Max. Welcome to the fourth webinar of the Future of Work uh, series. Thank you for being with us. Yeah, hi. And like I mentioned, we are starting off with a short discussion and the question of challenges. So my question is for all of you. Uh, when you look at the future of work, what are you all hearing from your clients as common pain points uh, across industries? And what are the key challenges that they are facing these days? Satish, you want to take the first one? Sure. Mm -hmm. Hey, Guinness. Hi. Yeah, so... Okay, so 
just a minute. Can I was just checking if I'm mute or <laughs> muted? That's good. I, we so, can hear you. Yeah. Okay. So thank you. So I think the the major challenges uh, today uh, the users are facing. Um, a lot of employees work from home, and one of the key challenges that uh, we all face is data security. That is top of the mind, and uh, the uh, data security comes with a couple of things. One is sophistication of keeping the data safe. Uh, against uh, the well-known things, which is uh, in terms of file security, which we have already uh, knowing more about it, and unknown threats from ransomware, um, especially when you talk about massive amount of data being threatened by ransomware, and how do you manage that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, thank you so much. So uh, Mark, you wanna take the next one? Yeah, sure. So uh, we do hear from customers as well, or like just like Satish is saying, uh, with the COVID-19, it certainly has changed our way of working and, and perhaps even push it to a different different level, right? And some of my customers, they, they did tell us, I say, hey, we have seen, uh, you know, sometimes uh, malicious files or ransomware and, and other, other stuff that's been sent through perhaps using uh, um, password protected files like archives, like a zip with password. So they, do, do you handle? So in, in Votero, yes, we actually do handle them. Uh, we, we can actually... Um, unlock that file, we can actually go ahead and uh, clean the file, uh, prevent threats from, from furthering, uh, further going into your organization. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Then Max? Yeah, so similarly, I think with what Satish has mentioned and Mark has mentioned, um, I, I'm also hearing that a lot more, um, you know, employees or workers um, working outside of the organization or remotely, right? So how, how does the organization prevent data leak um, in, in, this, uh, in these times, right? Uh, so I guess, I guess um, what, what they need to realize is that uh, they need a solution that can provide um, security, visibility, and control, right? Security in terms of uh, encryption, whether the files are sanitized as they upload the files, you know, visibility in terms of how, you know, how are these files being um, um, handled? Uh, where, where are these files going? Who, who are doing all these downloads uh, from where and all, right? And in terms of control, who can access the files? What, um, can sensitive files be downloaded? So, so these are the, some of the questions that's been you know, asked uh, to me. And I guess what we are doing today, we are sharing how um, our solution, mm -hmm. right? Uh, the solutions from Mutiro, Coicity, and EasyShare are able to address all these questions. Back to you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. So like, uh, I mean, you basically uh, did like a really good summarization of uh, all three of you. So the uh, increase in uh, need to protect the organizations from the advanced threats also like, especially in the remote work. And so thank you so much. What I want to just summarize it is like uh, to show how these also solutions uh, look like. So we can also say all these challenges are interconnected and it is revolving around the infrastructure, middleware and user facing software. And that's why the solutions uh, that are chosen to improve the security measures for organizations, uh, especially outside the corporate walls now, uh, they have to be able to integrate with each other and like they have to be compatible uh, with the existing systems and processes as well, right? Um, so with that, I will pass the uh, time to Satish. Satish, would you like to share your screen? Oh, please, yeah, mm -hmm. we'll do that. Let's get going. Yeah, we can see your screen. Perfect. Perfect. So, Satish hey, so, from Cohesity. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Guinness. Uh, so, we go through the file security beyond corporate walls from Cohesity, right? So, we look at who is Cohesity. So, Cohesity is a data management company uh, founded in 2013 by Dr. Mohit Aron. So, Mohit came with a, a very good a degree of writing the Google file system, which is the largest file system in the world. And he also, of course, founded a company called Nutanix, which is a pioneer in the hyperconverged space. And today, Cohesity is uh, headquartered in California and globally grown uh, into leaps and bounds with 70% of our most of our customers are large enterprises. 
and we have very good investors, including two of the largest OEMs, which is uh, HPE and Cisco, along with Sequoia and Google Ventures. Now, what is the new architecture for data management? As uh, uh, Guinness just mentioned about how cool is the infrastructure, the middleware, and the and the front user. You look at the one platform for the infrastructure where Cohesity is developing one single platform that can scale like Google, where it can run across multiple uh, servers. We are agnostic to any hardware. So we could span as long as you want infinitely. So this will be your single space to store all your files and data. And you have simple UI to manage the Cohesity platform and you can manage anywhere in the globe. Uh, so it's easy to manage and you have different apps and services on the top that you can actually deploy when you need it. Very similar example would be like your Android store or your iTunes Play store where you could just deploy any of these applications. That will take meaningful information of your data and give you the insight. A quick view of uh, the analysts looking at uh, Cohesity. So Cohesity has been rated among the top leaders as you probably see on my screen um, into the maturity cycle as well as uh, feature and function and innovation. Cohesity leads as an outperformer, uh, specifically on the file data management, on especially when you're looking at scaling the repository um, for your enterprise. Now, what is Cohesity? Very, very well known. Cohesity is very well known in uh, changing the, the typical landscape of data protection, where you have uh, legacy-based applications and legacy uh, management solutions, where you want to modernize with data protection, 100% agentless, and moving forward in terms of integrating with cloud and all these infrastructure components, Cohesity is a single software that covers a, a gamut of things from virtual to physical to databases uh, to storage and all the way to the cloud. It may be virtual, a physical, or a cloud-based deployment. Now that's great to know about data protection, right? But one of the biggest challenge that we see, especially in this COVID era, right? is the amount of data that people have to either read or write or modify from their favorite devices, from their home, right? From the luxury of the home. But uh, I mean, it may be called luxury or not. That's a, that's a debatable one on coffee. But if you look at what Gartner is saying, by 2024, almost every single organization would have tripled their unstructured data. That includes files, folders, that we receive, we save, we modify from anything all the way from CCTV to your files that you hold it on your favorite devices. So data growth is a serious challenge. Storage costs, that makes it uh, compelling because you've got to store it somewhere, right? Whether it is, uh, which container doesn't matter. So you've got to store it somewhere that can scale infinitely. So if you are growing at three times now, if, if things continue, it may be probably 5X or 7X multiple storage that would add cost. Compliance and regulatory is a cost, right? And how do you manage that? And hybrid cloud, a lot of organizations are looking at how do I store my data on both on-prem as well as on the cloud. Understanding that, and then looking back into your data center, this is typically how we look at, right? You have your people, you have your great applications that you need that propels your business, and you have SMB and NFS, which is the common protocol used for storing files whether you're a Windows user or a Linux user. And you have machine-based analytics that probably uses F3, which is uh, object-based, container-based, uh, where you write. And you have external application interfaces or infrastructure uh, components, which may be antivirus, compliance, analytics, and data management. All of these, you can see, are separate entity. So you've got to add each one of them to make things work for your traditional NAS architecture. And the cloud becomes an afterthought where you plug in with a gateway and move your data back and forth to the cloud. So that is typical of the legacy architecture. How does Cohesity change it? So Cohesity is a single data management platform that plugs into the cloud natively, that collapses all of these requirements, right? Your S3, your NFS and SMB still remains where you can sh share and, uh, uh, and, uh, and uh, collaborate for your users. But all of these applications that include, uh, whether it's sync and share, which we are going to talk more in detail today, uh, and you're going to see a lot more. You have antivirus, which is built in. You have compliance, analytics, data management, data classification, analytics. All of these are built inside the same architecture. 
So that means you have billions of files. You can do compliance study. You can do classification. You can find out which file has credit card numbers, which of those files have sensitive social security numbers or in our IC from our local terms, or do you want to track it with antivirus? Would you like to do sharing of these files and collaborate? So that is the integration part with, co uh, with Cohesity as a single data management platform. So what do we give? We give freedom of choice. We don't have vendor lock-in. You can deploy it anywhere. So that is gone. So you can now think about deploying it anywhere and have ease of use and ease of deployment. Very broad compatibility. So typical challenges include, hey, how do I do for my Mac? How do I do it for my Windows? How do I use my file server uh, across my multiple active directories? Maybe you're an organization, you bought over two other companies, you have adding in more active directories, how do you manage that? So that makes it easy to, and compatible with Cohesity. Stress-free operation, where the challenges of migration becomes difficult. Typically, it's very hard to migrate with Robocopy and things like that. So that is built in and natively taken care by Cohesity. Integrated application. So this is very, very similar to your Play Store or uh, iTunes Store, where you can download the apps on your mobile phone and get the value that you need, whether it is WhatsApp or whether you're using it for other movie editing or file editing. Very similar for your enterprise. How do you get to know more about your file auditing? Who did what, when, why, and so on. And, and content search and so on. Cybersecurity is also natively built in that plugs in uh, as an app where you should be able to detect your end-to-end -end, both in terms of uh, two-factor authentication all the way uh, in terms of storing and also detecting ransomware, right? Assuming a ransomware appeared a week ago or two weeks ago, how do you know that your business is not infected uh, or affected by the ransomware? How do you roll back as well? So Google likes search, so you can search for any file anywhere in your environment. So you could either go to your uh, favorite mobile devices or you could go back to your infrastructure, back in your data center and search for the files that you love or you want to search for your business. Low storage costs, because we are hardware agnostic, we absolutely reduce costs, right? Cohesity integrates with uh, most of the certified uh, x86 servers. So you actually can do more with very, very less. So smart files is, is a component of Cohesity. It's a, it's a feature that is embedded and you could use it for various requirements. One I mentioned earlier is data protection. You also can store your corporate videos, your video surveillance data, which is CCTV and so on. Your content management library, which is maybe files, folders for Unix and uh, Windows or digital archives or cold buckets for logging for Splunk and so on. So all of these applications can be taking advantage of Cohesity smart files, uh, which you can roll in. So in final summary, I would say we can bring Google-like simplicity to your enterprise data management. Unparalleled web scale architecture. So we could scale as small as 10, 20 terabytes to multi exabytes. Third, we have built-in data protection that you can take advantage of. So you could actually hook on to take backup of your Oracle, SQL, VMware, SQL workloads. Or you could also take advantage of your web scale NAS, which is a file repository, which is the whole uh, idea that I was sharing. We have mobile access, sync and share from any device that's in collaboration with Easy Share uh, or Inspire Tech and safe, secure and encrypted enterprise files. So in summary, we with the Easy Share, Inspire Tech and Votero, we are helping you to redefine data management. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you so much, Satish. Uh, thank you for going through like some like more challenges and like uh, how Cohesity solves those and like uh, going through the. In the meantime, Mark, you can share your screen, uh, and then going through how flexible and uh, compatible also Cohesity is, right? Um, and now I will leave the stage to Mark uh, so he can explain to us what a positive selection is. Yeah, from Votiro, Mark. Thank you, Kinesh. Uh, thank you for having us. Uh, we are from Votiro. My name is Mark. Right. So today we'll go through a little bit uh, in terms of the technology and, and what Votiro can help you in your organization. So let me ask. So what's keeping, up, uh, keeping us up most of the nights? 
uh, even like a defender of the cybersecurity. So look at this gentleman, perhaps in the in the same realm of uh, uh, security. This particular gentleman, a policeman, is uh, doing the physical security. So if I would, you know, in his shoes, and if someone were to push a Kevlar, you know, bulletproof vest to me and say, hey, this is, you know, the latest and the greatest, one catch. It's only 99% bulletproof. So, you know, that's, that's the thing that's going to be on my mind all the time. Am I going back home safely to my loved ones, things like that. And this is exactly what we're talking about when it comes to file security today. This is what we see in products today. Now, so what carries malware and what's coming through your network? You have all the examples here, as you can see from the screen, right? Email, uh, things like files that's going to help desk, and you have uh, portals that you get people to upload documents, so on and so forth. There's ways and means, there's so many ways that someone can actually move a file to you. Yes, I, I know, you know, we're, we're talking about Inspire Tech and we have Easy Share and all that. Uh, this is one great way to move a file. But we also need to think about, now, you trust me as Mark, but do you trust the security status of my machine that I created that file and I shared that file with you? This is a big question mark, right? So um, these are just some statistics uh, we can see from uh, Verizon data, ditch, data breach of uh, 2019, They're talking about uh, how bad files are coming in. Right, it's, it's no certainly no stranger to us that we, we see things like 94% vulnerabilities of emails and, and attackers are actually making use of this. So they're crafting files, a big percentage of them is actually, uh, as we can see here, is Microsoft Office, right? So I know there's another piece uh, people often look at will be cybersecurity training. Yeah, but, but we then need to understand that it's, it's not 100%. Right. As much as you can coach someone, you go through, you set up courses for, for your internal staff, you know, you really drill them and say, hey, please, please don't open up documents like this and that. But sometimes, you know, just because they're being productive, they just want to push through work, uh, they might need some. Right. But today, with the Tiro, because we are actually happening, or our technology, we cover them uh, based on what we call a gateway protection. Uh, so all files is coming in, we actually protect them. Right. So of course, just don't just take it from me and say, oh, I, I just heard of Mark, this person, but you know, whatever he's saying, yeah, I'll take it with a pinch of salt. But look at the big names out here, Symantec, Commodore, and uh, Polymon. They, they actually talk about things like uh, what we call uh, historical data, right? As we all know, Symantec, which is like a antivirus and all that, depends on historical data, right? Definition files, you need to update them, and therefore giving you that kind of protection, right? And some companies even push uh, antivirus to a, a slightly different level, saying that oh, we, we now have um, you know AI, ML, which is machine learning and, and artificial intelligence, to help us harness this this information we get in the past to predict you know what's going to happen in the future. Is there an attack coming? Is it coming tomorrow? Things like that. But what we want to tell customers is you got to think about it as well, right? Remember the the whole thing about the bulletproof vest, ninety nine percent protection. Well, that only means one thing, right? It only means that. Even if you get one percent possibility of getting through, well, it actually means it's a hundred percent infection if that comes through, right? So it's not a matter of like ah, if it comes if it comes through, it's more of a matter of when it's going to come, right? So for us in Potero, uh, we make use of what we call the positive selection, and I'll explain what positive selection is about. Uh, but first thing, when a file comes through, it could be through the channel of email, it could be through a file transfer, file share, and things like that. What we're going to do is we're going to Look at a file, right? We're going to disassemble the file into what we call the basic objects. We're going to look at the sections, the macros, and all that. And we're going to have the non-harmful parts extracted, right? So for example, what, what do we mean by non-harmful parts? So for example, if, if I have a, a string of, you know, like text, uh, it, it can be the strongest attack code with a, you know, that's actually matched to a certain vulnerability that you have. But if I put this in, in a text box, it's, it's still just, just text, right? So next, of course, with the basic objects being tear apart, what we're going to do is we're going to reconstruct the new files, right? So what we in Virtu want to promise is uh, if you're expecting a Word document, perhaps like a resume, right? With, uh, with a photo ID embedded there and with a couple of uh, PDFs that's actually embedded into that Word document, you get exactly the same thing. But, but of course, it's being reconstructed to new files, right? And this new file is actually what we call the uh, known safe version. Right? So we reconstruct the full depth of the macro. Right? We put it through the fidelity test, and of course, we deliver it to the end user. So in this, in this way, um, the, the 
functionality, the full functionality is maintained, but at the same time, what goes to the user's eyes is exactly the same, minus two threads, of course. So from a different angle, this is what we see, just an example. So there are a lot of times uh, HR will actually go out and draw the best talent to join a particular company, right? So they go ahead and post a job uh, positions as open. So an attacker, what they will do is they just go hunt around like, ah, this company is looking for someone of this particular position, good. I'll just go ahead and make a particular resume, put a picture in there and then send it over. So some of us may or may not already know that you know, if you look at the word document, it's not exactly just like one single document. So if you have any kind of like a 7-zip, a WinZip, perhaps installed on your laptop right, or PC, you can actually make use of that to open your word document as an archive, as an archive. So this is exactly what you see on the right hand, uh, on the left hand side, uh, different files is over there, and you can actually see things are just being embedded in there. Now, let me ask you a question. If I'm someone who's defending your organization, right? How am I supposed to guess where the attacker is going to plant the bad stuff? So many layers out there. Are you going to sit there, you know, to help the HR department open through this, all these layers and going through one by one? It's just too tough, right? So on the other hand, what we do is as a file comes in, like I said, we're going to break all this into different, uh, what we call the basic objects. And we are going to apply, since this is a Word document, we're going to apply the golden standard, the file specification from Word, right? So where's Word from? Word is from, or Office documents, is from Microsoft, right? So we're going to use that file specification. We're going to move the uh, save elements over and recreate the file. And of course, if your Word document has things like a picture, we're going to use the same things like JPEG, template, and all that to recreate all that. But we guarantee that whatever that goes to the user's eyes, they maintain the same. So what are you trying to do here? We're not trying to look out for bad stuff, right? We're not trying to look out for, ah, oh, what's the next bad thing or what has happened in the past and try to predict the future. We are doing what, it's what we call the, uh, like a money changer uh, mentality, right? So, so I have a hundred dollar US note here. So we like to travel, right? Sure. So perhaps let's pick a destination, Japan, right? So if I were to go to Japan, Narita, Haneda airport, and I had the money changer, this this a hundred dollar US bill, right? When he receives it, What's he going to do? Is he going to turn around to look at his wall with his collection of all the fake notes that he's collected in the past and try to figure out, is this note going to be real? But there's so many you know, manufacturers tomorrow, right? A new supplier, things like that. The ink that's used, the paper that's used, it's all different. But this money changer, do you know that in the whole wide world, there's only one US mint that's authorized to make money, uh, US dollars, right? So the same paper, the same look and feel, watermarking, right? The ink that's used, you just need to learn that, right? So for us, it's exactly the same. We are using the file specification from, for example, Microsoft, okay? So next, as you can see from the screen, I, I did a screenshot. Uh, I actually went ahead to inject some uh, some codes. Uh, actually, uh, this will work on a vulnerable server, right? Now, uh, of course, we all know that this is just a picture. Like what I mentioned earlier, I could have taken this picture, put codes there, and embed this picture in the Word document, right? Uh, how am I supposed to know where the attacker put this? But if right, you put the Word document through what we call the Votero uh, positive selection, as you can see on the right-hand side, after sanitization, it will turn out to be like this, right? So it's being, uh, if I use a layman term, it's like scrambled, right? So it doesn't just happen at the top part, it goes down all the way to the bottom. And we are not exactly looking for the bad stuff because that's pointless, right? Uh, if you and I may be attackers, we actually write quotes very differently, okay? So we're not looking, again, we're not looking for that stuff. So what we wanna give is to enable productivity back to the end users, right? Without compromising security, okay? Now, Gartner did say as well, right? So they say things like uh, by 2022, they're expecting perhaps 20% of the organization to use CDI as part of their content. And, and if you look at it, 2022 is not too far away. Right. So uh, we do have some customers in Singapore and around this region have already started uh, you know, using us and they also so started exploring uh, others have also started exploring the, our, our use, like positive selection. So this is what I have from uh, Votero. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mark. Sorry, I was on mute.
Um, thank you for going through the positive selection and like showing us how the files become risk-free after the sanitization process. So Max, uh, I would like to pass it to you. So Max from Inspire Tech to talk about Easy Share. Over to you, Max. He's unmuting himself, I think, right now. Yeah, I also yeah. just have a problem. Yeah, I couldn't <laughs> find a mute button, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Over to you, Max. All right, my screen is good, right? You can see the screen. All right, cool. Thanks, thanks again. So, so um, I'll, I'll start. It's what what is uh, with the uh, what is uh, easy share, right? Why does easy share matter? I mean, as I described earlier, I guess uh, a lot of questions that are being asked by customers and prospects alike uh, towards these days, right? How how are the files secured? How how do we how can we secure the files in our organization? And this is where you know where easy share matters to you, right? Easy share has a file um, security solution. We are a single platform that allows you to manage, share and govern um, files, right? Anytime, anywhere, right? This is where, you know, besides just providing you a platform, again, later, I guess, I will go into how we integrate with our partners, work with our partners to provide you with all the best, uh, you know, solutions in the market, like what you have heard from CoECP, right? One of the best uh, data management platform. Um, one of the best, Votero, uh, uh, one of the best, uh, you know, positive selection, sanitization uh, uh, tool or solution that's out in the market. Um, but back to easy share, right? Um, how do we, you know, work with our customers? What do we provide in our solution to our customers? As I mentioned earlier, we provide a platform. We provide a platform uh, uh, to allow customers, our customers to transfer large files, um, collaborate securely, um, uh, uh, whether you are in the office or working remotely, as well as um, you know, the, uh, the synchronization and backup of the documents from your endpoint device to a central um, data management repository. Together with you know, these three use cases that uh, you typically see our customers using easy share. We also see on the sideline that, you know, that as part of, you know, putting, deploying easy share into the organization, we also see our customers upgrading their infrastructure, right? Upgrading their infrastructure with CoECP, upgrading it with, um, you know, solutions like Motiro to make, uh, to make it more secure in their environment, in their organization, so that they can cater for uh, employees that are working in the office, working remotely, um, for those that you know are working um, wherever they are. There's also the issue of uh, you know the uh, USB ports is being restricted because of company policy, right? So how do they uh, you know access files? How do they share files? Um, how do they you know replace the underlying architecture of a uh, file transfer within the organization uh, with a more secure um, protocol. In this case, uh, it can be an S3 protocol that uh, CoECP offers, right? Um, just to share more about how some of our customers are doing it. For example, Raffles Medical Group, right? They are using EasyShare um, to um, share um, sensitive patient information back to the patients as they receive patient, maybe not, 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 not this humans, but before the COVID times, they were getting um, uh, patients, right, from um, various parts of the world, from our neighboring countries like Malaysia, Indonesia, which they come to Singapore to seek medical treatment. And when they go back to their respective countries, how does this information, sensitive patient information, goes back to these patients, right? So um, what Raffles Medical has done is that they have actually um, um, sent Inf patient information, sensitive patient information uh, via EasyShare with an OTP uh, protection, OTP to verify uh, the recipient as they receive the document, whether to download uh, you know, the, uh, the document or to view the document. So this gives them a second factor authentication where they can safely you know, verify that the person that is downloading the document is in fact verified uh, before they can download. And obviously, on top of all that, you also, we also 
have audit logs, audit trails to track, keep track of, you know, um, the, like the questions uh, I was being asked before, um, where who are down, who are downloading this? Uh, what from what IP address are these um, uh, documents being downloaded? So these are all I mean addressed through the uh, audit log of um, EasyShare. Another customer of ours, uh, Resorts World, Sentosa. So what they do is that uh, in order to uh, bring their, their file sharing experience <coughs> back into an on-premise environment rather than to depend on, the, uh, on a uh, cloud storage that's hosted outside of Singapore. Um, what they have done is that they deployed um, EasyShare Enterprise right, uh, within the, um, uh, the, the uh, Sentosa headquarters, right? So every file that goes out or every files that they receive, uh, you know, are being um, uh, controlled are being controlled by Easy Share, where you know the, these files are uh, tracked, monitored, as well as uh, audited, right? But besides beyond these two customers, obviously we do have many, many more customers. Um, we have got uh, numerous customers in government as well as in the commercial sector, right? But has all these customer uses Easy Share? How does EasyShare enable file security? So just two things, the platform, as well as the integration with our partners, right? What is, so what, what, um, what do we see uh, in the platform? Uh, basically EasyShare provides the platform, right? Uh, the platform where we provide that security, visibility and control aspects, like uh, what I have um, mentioned earlier. Right, um, for security, authentication is key. Uh, encryption is key. Watermarking of files, view-only modes, in terms of visibility, uh, the tracking of end-to-end -end files, uh, the monitoring of systems, comprehensive audit logs, as well as in control, where you can set policies, security policies, at you know at the company level, group level, user level, uh, as well as managing managing the different roles and permission. Uh, uh, that you have uh, in, in the uh, you know in the organization that you want to manage it, and in the next few series of slides, what I've done is uh, I just wanted to give you a glimpse of what um, the the kind of functionality that EasyShare offers to you, right? Um, through the platform, just the platform itself, um, two FA verification, you know, limited download attempts, um, view only mode. As well as link expiry, so these are some of the some of the capability that we offer when we, when we talk about large file sharing. As we talk about secure collaboration, it goes deeper into the role permission. It goes into a single point uh, uh, access point for different file repository as well, right? As well as giving you the flexibility of controlling how the files. Uh, that you want your users um, to, uh, to work on, whether you want them to fully work on it online through our online editors where they do, the users are not even able to download uh, into their laptop to uh, you know, edit these files, uh, whether you need to track all the different um, check-ins and check-outs of the files that's happening, as well as uh, versioning, right? Versioning, which is important to uh, keep um, you know the various the previous various versions uh, that has been uh, changed on the file. So uh, all these uh, you know features and functions provide you with the extra um, secure collaboration environment. Not forgetting document tagging, which I think Satish mentioned earlier as one of the uh, uh, one of the key areas where files that are uploaded to uh, Easy Share can be classified according to uh, their sensitivity. Or their confidentiality, and you know, besides just you know looking at um, you know the the, the, the the image of the laptop that uh, I've shown you on the past few slides, EasyShare works on multiple different devices as well, right? Um, we work on Windows, the Mac OS, uh, even there's even an out, uh, add-in on Outlook, uh, as well as all the different browsers and mobile devices out in the market, and as we progress into uh, the, the backend area of EasyShare. How do you, um, you know, set all this up? How do you configure all this up? 
um, at EasyShare, what we do is we provide you with an admin portal. And this admin portal, what it, what it does is that it provides you with a comprehensive view of your users, of the groupings that you have created in EasyShare, of the various uh, permissioning, the various storage that you want to connect to, as well as all the audit logs um, that you want to uh, you know, keep track of, right? And all these are provided through, you know, uh, what we call end-to-end -end file security, encryption in transit, encryption at rest, TLS-based uh, encryption as well, and in terms of uh, architecture options, we do provide different uh, deployment options as well as architecture designs um, to cater for your needs, right? When you deploy EasyShare. And, and lastly, in terms of the governments and governance and compliance, uh, it's NPCS certified as well as some, you know, we do have ISO certification. Now, let's move on to the integration uh, portion of it. The second part, uh, the plus, the, the plus part that I was talking about earlier. So how do we then with this platform work with our partners? Um, as, I, as I showed earlier, the platform has got, you know, the, the file transfer functionality, the secure collaboration functionality, but we reckon that that is not enough, right? We needed uh, to partner with partners, with our partners that can provide um, us with uh, more capabilities, extended capabilities or more advanced uh, functionality that we can actually plug into the easy share uh, platform, right? Um, you have heard from um, Botiro, uh, which is the, uh, you know, the um, data pro protection part. Uh, you have heard from CoECD, which is, which is the data management part. Uh, this, these are just two examples of um, partners that we partner with, but Beyond that, we do have partners in the semantic search uh, uh, area. We do have threat, uh, partners in threat prevention, analytics, as well as we provide our own APIs, right? Our own APIs for you to integrate your business systems to leverage on the easy share um, uh, environment, right? Um, just to give you a quick summary, whatever, you know, whatever Satish has presented uh, on CoECT, you know, protects, all your data workloads all the time, right? Consolidate file and objects at scale, as well as, you know, uh, giving uh, the, uh, the possibility of global de uh, deduplication search and multi-protocol access to every to all uh, solutions that's connecting into CoECT. And for Votero, I think the keyword will be positive selection technology, right? So that is that keyword that you just need to remember. And lastly, what I wanted to do is I wanted to show you a demo, right? The demo of how all three of our solution works together, right? Um, I did a little animation on this slide just to show you how um, it works in the overall and I'll then deep dive into, you know, um, videos to uh, show you how some recorded videos on how all this work in an actual um, easy share um, environment. So we start off with you know, internal users that needs to upload files right into easy share or even external recipients that um, as the internal users are requesting files. So they need to upload these files to an easy share portal. So that easy share portal is available to just about any users, whether it's external or internal to upload files. But as they upload files, what we have done is that we have partnered with Votero to sanitize the files through their positive selection to, you know, as uh, you know, Mark has mentioned, take out all the good stuff, but you know, leave all the bad stuff behind, right? And as all these files are sanitized, uh, EasyShare will then push through these files to CoECT via you know the S3 or the SMB protocol, whichever protocol that you want to configure to integrate EasyShare to um, CoECT with, right? And now let's take a look at how this will work, right? So. What I've done is that I will start with CoECT uh, to show you that how easy it is for uh, you know for a user to configure CoECT connector that we have natively in our Easy Share uh, to create it and then to create uh, shared uh, folders or drives uh, before it's being assigned to uh, the users. Right, so it's just as easy as clicking one, two, or three buttons. Right, uh, as you can see on the video. 
assigning uh, the capacity alert threshold, as well as you can see that the different uh, devices that you want to allow to access into uh, this coecity storage. As the storage is, uh, as the drive is created, you then assign permission, right? Permission, whether it's an owner, author, contributor. So depending on what you want to assign. So you can actually uh, do all this permission granularly on EasyShare uh, interface while uh, EasyShare does all the heavy lifting of con connecting it to CoECT at the back, right? So as the, as the drive is created, the next thing obviously is that upload that is happening, right? So the upload, uh, the user that's uploading the file has they upload the file. What they do is that, uh, what, what EasyShare does is that EasyShare will queue it, to start uploading it. And as the file is being uploaded, right? That's where Votero comes in, right? Uh, Votero with that uh, positive selection uh, technology or process. So you, you can see um, what I have here is I have uh, Mark's uh, resume, right? Resume that is being uploaded and has the file is uploaded and sanitized by uh, Votero, right? You can see that all the good stuff, all his good resume parts are being, uh, you know, reconstructed in that sanitized file where else leaving the malware behind. And at the end, at the end of it, this sanitized file will then be um, uploaded into EasyShare, right? Into, uh, sorry, CoECT uh, via EasyShare. Um, you know, as the files uh, being uh, completed, you can then, you know, do several things with it. As you can see on the screen, you can do that file sharing, um, you can do um, collaboration, but let's just focus on file sharing, right? You can um, select that file, select the file that I've just uploaded, share the file uh, to a person. In this case, I'm just sharing it back to myself, adding myself as uh, the recipient. It can be one recipient, it can be many recipients, and selecting the different um, parameters that I, uh, I want to share it with, right? As I click on share the file, uh, obviously, the file which is sanitized can be you know, shared to an internal or external uh, recipient. Uh, other than that, I also mentioned the online editing capability of EasyShare. So without leaving EasyShare, you can actually do editing. In this case, I just open the file, open a PPP file. Um, and what I'm doing is that I just wanted to add in uh, our customer success in Singapore, right? And I can actually, I can then quickly save this file without even downloading file, downloading the file to a laptop and opening the file uh, through a PowerPoint application that is installed on my laptop. What this uh, is is that this gives that security, the control, right, the visibility um, that I've been mentioning from the start of the webinar today. Uh, you know, the, the organization will be able to um, use this um, three things to have better and safer environment, right? To, um, to, uh, to, to, to govern their files on, uh, on their network, right? That's what I have today. Back to you, Gunesh. Thank you. Thank you so much, Max. Like going through the, uh, how the, Easy share actually helps with the remote work, like content collaboration and like a secure file sharing works. And uh, the summary of how the three solutions uh, come together. Um, let me share my screen quickly. So we go on from there. And yes, I will continue then. So we, by the way, we are receiving a lot of uh, questions. So if you write it under the Q&A, button if you use the Q&A button it is easier for us to write back to you uh, because I don't think we will have time to answer all of them live uh, so it will be great if you can just write it in the Q&A so far whatever you have written it's okay but from now on uh, we would appreciate it I and mean, it's easier and then how we're gonna continue before the Q&A is like a after all of your presentations, like I would like to also ask our speakers like a few recommendations from their side uh, with their expertise. Like, uh, can you uh, share some tips and tricks uh, for when you look at the future of work that you can share with the audience that we can all take away from the webinar also. 
So um, this time we can start from the end. So Max, you want to start? Sure, sure, sure. I was mm -hmm. just going to uh, get a drink, but then <laughs> I'll, 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 finish, I'll finish this before I get, getting the drink. So I, I guess I think um, what I would say is invest in a secure platform, right? With ready integration to one of, you know, to the best of the best uh, industry in this, uh, uh, solutions in the industry. I guess with easy share, you have that flexibility. You, you have that one platform, right? Uh, and you are able to choose the most appropriate integration that are uh, that is required in your organization. And I guess uh, I just just to round it up, I guess it's important, right, to have that mm -hmm. solid, secure platform foundation to build on and uh, strengthen your corporate walls to restrict data from you know your organization from being leaked. So that's what uh, I have for you today. Get yeah. easy share, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you Thanks. so much, Max. But like, I, I mean, like people have realized that also like, I mean, unfortunately with the sad incident of the pandemic, like everything was faster, like a, all, all of that transition. So yeah, and Mark, I will uh, pass it to you. Max, please go ahead and have a drink. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Sure, sure, no problem. Sure. No, to, to, to continue with, you know, like uh, what Max is talking about, like easy share, think, think of us, you know, in the past, we, we are walking around, you know, passing thumb drives to one another, but this is, we don't really do that, right? And especially with the future, you know, we talk about the future, but I guess, well, to me, the future is now, right? The future is now. And, you know, things like easy share, you're asking people to collaborate with you, send files to us and all that. So it's always important to review our you know, the, the security posture of the company, the technologies as well, uh, look at material, right? We're, we're not like the old days of uh, antivirus still requiring uh, definition files updates and checking and trying to look out for bad stuff. Tomorrow, there will be always be a new bad stuff, right? This is impossible to learn all of them, right? So I guess yeah. it's, it's really important to secure all channels of traffic coming, coming in, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Satish? Thanks, Gina. So you, uh, that's a, a great point by Max and Mark, right? So uh, always as a customer or any enterprise, you got to be prepared for ultimate disaster as well. We didn't plan for a pandemic. What happened if there is a pandemic in data tomorrow? Can your business start in a couple of hours? And that is a big question mark for us to take. We can't put a mask for the data or the data center because that's, uh, say, assume there is a ransomware attack across the data center. Almost all data is getting locked, uh, right? You may ask me, is it hypothetical? Because uh, eight, nine months ago, this was hypothetical scenario for us as well. So given those are scenarios that can happen, are we ready to defend ourselves? And I think you have the best of breed today. Uh, you had uh, Easy Share and Otero along with Cohesity because Cohesity comes with a native data platform that not only provides you a store for files and uh, file data, it also helps you to protect your data. So once you store it, you can actually take enormous amount of backups, uh, scan them, send it to a second site, upload it to a cloud and collaborate. So that's my summary. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you like so much to all, all three of you. And uh, like I said, we received a lot of questions. So I would like to, uh, move on to the Q&A uh, session. And um, some questions are really short to answer, but um, I will just choose a few. Um, uh, so sorry, like, this is like the first time you have this many questions. And um, in the, I will go from where I know, right? Uh, Max, uh, when you say EasyShare can replace SMB like Windows file server, share how does it work while you explain i will pick up the questions yeah oh i was just i was just going to answer that online it's uh, that, okay. that same question online but what i wanted to say is that easy share will not replace smb right easy share is just a platform that can connect to the different um, file um, repositories for example in this case in this session itself we will connect to um, uh, coicity right and coicity um, has got two choices, whether it's an SMB or uh, S3 or sorry, three choices, NSF, right? So in this case, if you want to uh, move away from SMB, we would connect to Coicity's S3 uh, protocol to um, uh, get to all that files. Mm -hmm. Then my next question is for Mark. 
Um, how does Wotero work uh, with engineering files like uh, 3D, PDF, DWG files, etc., in keeping the files clean? So uh, for us in Votero, we are very specific in, in files that we will put, as you put through the policy selection, files, certain files will get reconstructed, certain files will, will not get reconstructed. PDF, for example, these, these are files that will get reconstructed. Uh, Microsoft Office has the other one, pictures, uh, archive files, these, these are things that get, uh, they will go through reconstruction. Uh, DWG, for example, will be one that we do check for uh, what we call the structural, right, the structural uh, correctness of that. Right, so we, we need to ensure that uh, this is actually indeed DWG files. So one of the common, common ways that we often see out there, people tend to change uh, file extension. Uh, to us in Votero, file extension is nothing more than just a name. Right? Tomorrow, I can actually take, take an EXE, I can rename that as uh, perhaps a PDF. Right? It's not going to be a PDF, it is still an EXE by nature. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Then the, uh, for Cohesity, I would like to ask like the next question. Um, the question is a little long, uh, but the end, like uh, the main part is the what technology does Cohesity deploy to protect against ransomware attacks? Oh, that's a great question. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, once uh, you have the data, which we collaborate through NFS or SMB or S3 uh, through the easy share, and it deposits itself on Cohesity, which is a scalable file system. So once you have all these data in, so what we do is we actually look at the file entropy, right? How much of data has come in as of yesterday, as of today, as of day before. And we actually look at the file folder entropy and using AI, we actually detect that compared to yesterday, compared to a few minutes ago, compared to how much the data has changed uniquely, so that gives us the opportunity to find out because we are also a backup solution. So we are able to tell you that compared to every day if a customer is having a 10 GB of backup, for example, and suddenly there was a spike of 50 GB. So the system is automatically capable using AI with the, uh, the file analytics and entropy to detect that this is a unusual pattern, which was not by the corporation, but this is an unusual pattern and that would help us to flag up saying that is ransomware. And we are able to detect that. And the good part is detecting is one part. What is the next action plan, right? Going back in time to select the right copy of your data so that you can go back in time back to your business so that you're not infected further. Mm. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you too. Um... I think I will just ask like a one more question each and then we can round off afterwards and then we can announce the winner. So like if they need to go, then, uh, then they can go. Um, uh, easy question, who holds the encryption keys in EasyShare? So, so for EasyShare, there are uh, keys that you can set um, in EasyShare. So it will be, uh, I, I would say, you can define the key that you can uh, put in easy share so that uh, you know the key. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Max. And then um, Mark, I think this one is coming for you. It's a little long. So what is the difference between Votero and NGFW or UTM devices that does key, that does deep packet inspections and also oof, incorporate AV scans and sandboxing? And why does Votero <laughs> thing is different? Right. So maybe some of you will go ahead and Google me. So I come from companies like uh, we do UTM, that's Fortinet and, and all that, and even McAfee. Now, one big difference uh, you know, from Votero versus the rest, it's uh, like what I said earlier, right? So we don't really depend on what we call historical data, definition files. So instead of looking things as bad, like I keep saying, it, it's, it's impossible to know what's one of the new bad things is going to come out. So tomorrow, let's say I'm a, a really skilled hacker. I found a new vulnerability. I wrote a totally complete co different code that is a new way to attack. None of the AI solution out there is going to help you, right? So uh, the other thing about a sandbox, let's, let's give all of us an exercise to do after this whole uh, webinar. Just go ahead and open up your browser, go ahead and Google and say how to bypass a sandbox. You will see tons and tons of uh, write-ups and, and you know ways telling you how how to bypass that. So so we we do what we call the uh, zero trust. We don't trust any files. 
uh, unless in the policies that's really granular, you can actually explicitly say that uh, I, I'm going to say skip this because I really trust Mark and he, he has an email of this. Just an example. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. And then one last question, which is for Satish. Um, does Cohesity provide on-premises storage for protecting backups? Great question. So, mm -hmm. um, yes, we do support uh, on-premises backup. Mm -hmm. So Cohesity can be deployed on the cloud, on-premises, or on the edge. So edge could be as simple as a VM or a single EU server. It could be deployed on the data center where you need uh, the qualified servers, minimum of three. So it is an these are unlimited clusters. So beyond three, you can keep scaling and scaling and scaling. On the cloud, you can have any number of compute that you can spin up, whether it is on AWS, Azure, or Google. So yes, the answer is yes, and we mm -hmm. can deploy it anywhere. Cool. Thank you. Thank you so much, Satish. Um, we have seen all of the questions also like that we couldn't answer right now. Uh, so we will take it offline and like we will try to get back to you after the webinar. So uh, we answer e every question that you have. Um, without further ado, so I would like to, if my slide moves, oh yeah, hang on, it moved too much. Oh yeah, before we move on, um, we have one last webinar next week, right? So uh, it is again related to uh, remote work and then reimagining the digital workplace in the new normal. Um, if you have time next week, you can just scan the QR code now and then uh, register. And we also we'll, we will have a bit more gifts next week because that will be the last webinar of the series. Um, and we also have like a really short uh, survey at the end of this webinar. So please fill out that survey. It will be great for us. So then we know how we did it and like uh, what we can do to improve. And after this, Yes, now I can say without further ado, uh, the winners of like uh, this uh, webinar series is the Joe Lee. Uh, ah, sorry for the pronunciations if it's wrong. Uh, Su Im Ten and Sabrina Ho. So we will be getting back to you like after next week. So after all of the series are done and to uh, arrange the delivery. So thank you so much, everyone. Like, thank you, Max. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, thank Satish, you. for being with us today thank and you. everyone who has attended and spent their hour with us. Uh, if you are free, join us next week. Uh, we always have like a different content every week. And so, and don't forget to fill out the survey. Thank you so much for being with us. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank Bye. you, everyone. Bye.